Hi, I'm Kate McKinnon. I'm here to talk to you about the Zigwing Bangle. Um, this is a piece in progress, and it began life as a four-pointed MRA band. And each of the sides of each peak of the four points were built with 20 beads, so that each complete peak had 40 beads, 20 up and 20 down. And on the 11th space from the point, the outside point on each of them, an increase was inserted and built upon so that now we have an eight-pointed event. And what I'm planning to do with this is join it into a zigwing bangle. Uh, I'd like to point out to you, though, this shape, well, no matter how many points you're starting with, four, five, six, or seven, depending on your finished size, um, you've got a lot of options for joining. Have a look at this. If you were to fold it this way and join only the center beads, it forms a beautiful, sort of a classical pinwheel flower shape. And it's easy to imagine joining this in the center and filling it in for some sort of a beautiful pinwheel, focal, or brooch. Right? In this circumstance, though, this being a zigwing, what we're actually planning to do is take these side increases and join them so that they form beautiful little points reminiscent of flower petals, leaves, or dancing slippers. So I'm about to take the critical round that will make that join and turn this from an eight-pointed delight into something very different. Well, as you can see, I have completed this much of my point. I am now to the first increase on this side. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join it to this side without using any beads, although I could. I'm just not planning on it. And to make a secure join, I'm actually putting my needle down two beads on this side. You know, just for, just for safety's sake. And then I'm going to come through the top two beads on this side as well. And then I'm going to bring those beads together with the beads on this side. Okay? So as I pull these together, you see how neatly that happens. And I'm going to reinforce this join gently and carefully, starting by taking two beads on each side and finishing by doing one. Now this joint's going to take a lot of strain and so it's very important to make sure it's done cleanly and strongly. And if you have to go a bead at a time, that's fine. It's a spiky little piece. It's easy to get your thread tangly. Better to go slowly. So I'm just going through each of the tip beads in order. <laughs> Very spiky moment in the Zigwing's lifespan. So that's nice. Now I am going to attend to this leaf and I'm going to finish this petal before I move on to another petal. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to once I'm satisfied that my join is as smooth and elegant as need be, I'm going to proceed around this leaf or slipper uh, with the understanding that this is the bottom and that this will be the top. Or that this will be the bottom and this will be the top. Depending on your design, you may have a, a preference for which side will show or which side you think of as the top and the bottom. But I am, in fact, on one side. See? So, I'll work on this petal a little bit, and I'm going to be placing size 15 beads down by the tip to help decrease the point elegantly. I've now made a circuit around the leaf point, and I am back here at the back, 
and as you can see I have alternated using size 11 and size 15 beads on this leaf. Switching down to 15s here at the end and here at the back is a tailoring move. The idea being that it will make the point of the leaf more delicate. Uh, it makes a lovely little pointed dancing slipper. I actually chose to continue the two bead increase at the tip for one more round so that when I put the single point on at the end it ends up with three size 15s at the end. And now that I'm back here at the join point, I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity of there being two beads in the gap to put in another increase. And I want to be clear, this is not a part of our pattern, but I would just like to show you that there is an opportunity here for tiny little details. And this sort of thing may come in handy later as a tailoring device. Well, you'll see. <laughs> so, I am going to make sure that this is even. And I'm going to continue working on this petal, going around and around it, until it's decreased a good bit. Uh, if I were planning on bezeling a stone, this is an example of when I would need to know what my front and back is. If I was preparing for the back of the stone right now, I wanted to close a little more, get the stone in there, and then sew it down flat, and then turn this over uh, when it's time to work on the other side, and then focus on doing the final bezel for the stone at that time. I'm not planning on setting stones, but if I were, that's what I'd do. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and close this peak, then I'm going to come back out to the side that I'm working on, go over to the other join point, and join all four of these increases into petals. And then I think you'll see it'll be starting to take the classic zig wing shape.